well you've seen our earlier videos and you know that we normally compare a brand new motorcycle with a used alternative available in the market because why not someone wants a brand new motorcycle experience while the other would prefer to have the most out of his money well hey to each his own and we are here to find out which one would be the right pick for you so is the more refined and updated bmw g310r which is now considerably cheaper considering its price drop after the BS4 or the Z650 which is a bang for buck provided you find a well maintained motorcycle in the market. Hello and welcome to the Drivers Hub, you are watching Upshift, I am Kiran and today we are here to find out if listening to your brain is important or to your heart. Now before we dive into this video, we are not claiming these two motorcycles to be direct rivals in any sort of way. This comparison is solely based on the money you are willing to spend which is around 4 lakh rupee mark. The new G310R comes at around 10x showroom price of 2.65 lakhs but comes on road to about 3.1 lakh rupees. And a used C650 depending on the year, running and condition can be acquired for around or below. 4 lakh rupees. Well, the BMW G310R, the tank has the bulk which is similar to the older bike but the side panels are revised and even the badge now sits on a brand new side panel and the panel below it is also new. Well, you can see that R and the new 310 monogram over here and actually it looks really good. And otherwise other than that, it's got the LED treatment on the headlight and the indicators. The DRL is really slick and unique and it looks really lit at night. Another minor improvement and well it's a big thing for most of the people is that this bike now comes with adjustable levers. So clutch and brake feel is well considerably better than the BS4 model. Well looks are subjective and I'll let the B-rolls do the talking but the Z650, the BS4 one that's here. Well, it looks compact, the tank is muscular and well, for someone like me who's nice, small and tiny, it looks perfect. Heck, you might even mistake it for a 300cc if you don't look at it carefully. But the way it shoots ahead, you'll realize, no, it's a 600cc. Well, that's the best thing about it. It also follows the Z ideology of design, the initial designs. Well, the taillights form a Z when it's lit. Well, it's kind of corny. According to Bhavneet, I like corns. So, that works. It's, it's, it's lit at night, it looks really mad, but then again, you're hopping on the bike and you're riding it, not sitting behind it. So, to each his own again. But otherwise, the Z ideology works, the bike is light, compact and feels well and damn comfortable. But once you go over 100, 120, you'll feel all the wind buffeting in front because, well, there's nothing to save you from it. To know more about the 650 platform, you can watch our review on the Ninja 650 here. And well, otherwise it doesn't have the TFT display, BS4 and a few bits here and there. But underneath all of that is the same parallel twin churning out roughly 65-66 horsepower. And well, the torque is available, the engine is more usable. And that's why we have it right over here for this comparison. Well, on the G310R, a few things are different. First, it's an updated seat. It's a single piece seat and thankfully it's a bit more comfortable than the BS4 model and the second thing you'll notice is that the handlebars are nice and wide well the tank doesn't have as much as space to hold on to it while going hard in the corners like the Z650 but because of the nice and wide handlebars you have more leverage in the corners which is I think a very good thing especially you're planning on hitting the canyons up ahead well, the engine looks new because it's now finished in black instead of grey as the BS4. But the internals have remained completely unchanged. The, it's the same 313cc single cylinder motor that makes roughly around 33.5 bhp and 28 newton meters of torque. But two major additions that is, it has now a slipper clutch and a ride by wire throttle system. So basically, the slipper clutch because of that, your clutch feel is a little bit lighter and your downshifts are smooth. But the gearbox is as clunky as ever, so your upshifts, well, they're gonna be clunky as ever. But the ride by wire throttle though, it's made a very big difference because unlike earlier, 
once you leave the throttle it, it was very snatchy and snappy but because of the right by wire throttle it's easier to modulate the throttle and manage especially when you're going in the corners flowing through them or even going through traffic The G310R isn't the sharp-edged hardcore motorcycle that you might think it is. The suspension is a bit on the plushier side. The engine isn't as ballistically powerful as the Duke 390 nor is the riding position. But don't take these points as negatives cause the G310R is the ultimate city blaster with its wide handlebars and ride by wire throttle making it super easy to modulate the throttle especially when you're filtering through traffic. The brakes are also very good with the initial bite. Coming to the engine, the 310 cc built-in conjunction with the TVS is a solid motor. The initial torque is strong, so is the mid-range, and then the power starts to taper off a little bit. But this isn't something to complain about, or maybe I am just saying that since we had a 650 cc twin cylinder also during this test. But trust me. This motor feels lot more than sufficient and one thing that it has going for itself is the sound that it makes. It's much more enjoyable to listen than that of a Duke 390 any day. And in this comparo, maybe even as good as the Z650 just cause the tone is too good. Maybe the G310R's natural habitat might not be the twisties, but one thing everyone rode it agreed on that it is much more easy to ride and confidence-inspiring than any of the 300cc in the class, which immediately makes it much more accessible to novice riders. And oh, just look at this cool heat discoloration on the bent pipe. Absolute money. Coming to the Z650, the engine is bonkers. The sound of the engine might not be the most exciting, but like everyone says, there is no replacement for displacement. And in this test, that was very true. The Z650 is a little bit on the heavier side, so it takes a little bit more skill to carry speed throughout the corners. But once you exit the corner, it absolutely punches out. The power is available everywhere in the rear range. so in any gear as long as you're above 30 to 40 kmph you have the big wave of torque carrying you yes the z650 is a little bit more nose heavy but overall the balance of the motorcycle is pretty good the suspension is a little bit on the stiffer side the twin disc setup up front is a little bit more difficult to get used to the motorcycle is a little bit more difficult to lean on but once you get the sweet spot going it rewards you with a big smile on your face but do remember this definitely isn't something that you should go for as your very first motorcycle cause it is quite quick very expensive to maintain and can throw you off in a blink of an eye whereas the BMW G310R is the more tame motorcycle which can help you improve your riding and develop as a rider as well So ultimately in the end this is 5 kilos heavier than its BS4 part but still it feels light nimble that 5 kilos isn't dead weight the suspension is nice and soft same thing as the previous generation preload adjustability at the back well it has the perfect balance to avoid potholes or go through them or even be comfortable on the highways or the canyons you start going hard on the bike then you realize not the best thing in the stables out there but it will get the job done it doesn't have the Road 5 tires that's the same from the Apache RR310 it has Michelin PSR wish it had that so it would have given more and better feedback compared to what these tires are giving right now and well the Z650 it's a bang for buck you can daily it if you can afford the fuel prices it handles well the balance is fine nice and nimble it shines everywhere whether you take it on the highway or on the canyons even in the cities so is a bang for buck so well if you want the brand new experience provided you can also afford the service cost of BMW but if you're done with the 300 cc segment and you want to make the most out of the 3 lakh rupees you're spending or which you would spend on this bike 
spend a little bit more or as much, find a nice bike, go for this. So it's your pick. Let me know in the comments down below, would you pick a brand new bike or are you done with the 300cc and you'd rather spend all your money on a 600cc used motorcycle. Until then, please do the needful, like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.